Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today I wanted to talk briefly about system level modeling and about our software MapleSim. And as we get going, I want to focus on one of the central issues that we've tried to solve by developing MapleSim. And of course system level modeling is a part of that. But we see this as part of a bigger issue of commercial knowledge being locked away in the brains of engineers and across departments and the inability to freely share design knowledge and information across a company being one of the central issues that can really hold back a design process. So to start, a little bit about system level modeling. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as 1D modeling and it's going to be different than models you would make in say an FEA or CFD program which vary not only in time but across all spatial dimensions. System level modeling is a complementary process to those other techniques and it allows you to really understand the performance of an entire system at once uh, instead of focusing on specific subsystems and hoping that everything will come together nicely once all those subsystems are integrated. So it follows from there that these models are typically quite multi-domain even in a simple mechanism that you're looking to actuate that's going to include multi-body components, mechanical components, electrical components and so on. So in a system level model, there's going to be one environment that you'll bring all of those into. And they're concerned with aggregate properties, which means that using some simplifying equations that are the beginning parts of most design processes, that very complicated partial differential equations, they'll be simplified and reduced using those assumptions, and they'll create equations that are highly efficient, yet are designed to provide very high fidelity answers for the kinds of questions you're looking for. So again, you can see how this is complementary in that the simulations here are very efficient compared to uh, the much more resource intensive FEA type analyses. So the current situation is typically that an engineer will use some combination of FEA, of spreadsheets, of their own intuition, and they're going to generally have a good sense of how their products work. And for this reason, they might not feel like they need a dynamic simulation software since all of these other tools combined generally helps them get where they need to go. Um, but there'll be a time when they'll need to add a new subsystem. They might need to add a new mechanism to their design. And there's a variety of different design changes where they're probably not going to be able to make those changes confidently in the way that smaller changes, they could easily do that. So by taking on a system level approach, it's really quite quick to create or test an initial concept and notice any red flags right out the gate. It's a natural way for modeling multi-domain systems because everything can be brought into the same environment and analyzed with that full view always in mind. And this is going to make answering quick what-if questions much more straightforward than before. So this is what a system level modeling tool looks like. This is our program MapleSim. And what you're looking at is a model workspace that is comprised of a variety of components, uh, several hundred stock components with the ability to make custom ones. And they're connected up in a way that physically resembles the kind of system that you're creating. Um, other kinds of system level modeling tools might rely only on what's called signal flow blocks, which is essentially a, a blocked out way of representing the mathematics involved. But to take it on in a way like we do, your models are, are connected up in a, uh, in a way that resembles the physical system. So if you're modeling a slider crank, uh, you're going to see the physical links connected up in a way that actually represents something. We've got a large library of components on the left hand side with several hundred components based on the Modelica standard. And on the right hand side, you can see that every component will have a wide array of parameters and options that can be changed. So generally, this is the workspace that somebody will create a system level model in, and then they'll be able to run simulations. And one part of the simulation results will be a 3D visualization of your system, which is a great way to quickly work with your design to see what works and what doesn't work. We'll do a little bit of an in-product demo with MapleSim towards the end of this, and uh, we can maybe give you a good idea of how it might look to create and work with a model. So in many ways, a system level model really sits at the heart of an innovative design process and it serves almost as a knowledge or information repository of how a product and a design actually looks. This knowledge is going to tend to be underutilized in a variety of ways. 
and it's going to be underutilized because it's essentially locked away from a variety of people who would stand to benefit the most from it. So we think about this as locked commercial knowledge. And we developed MapleSim and our corresponding software Maple uh, primarily to help unlock that knowledge and make all the knowledge contained within your model more accessible to everybody who's going to need it along the entire design process. So to illustrate this a little more, uh, let's think about a design process in terms of the knowledge involved or in terms of the, uh, the company know-how that's contained within a variety of engineers. So at the beginning of a design process, a variety of engineers are going to try and take the design concepts and actually turn them into useful knowledge. So they'll be mapping those concepts and assumptions into equations, into components if they're doing system level modeling, and they're going to try and codify what it is they know. At that point, they're going to try to ensure that the knowledge that they've created for their design will be accessible to the people who need to use it the most. So the people who worked on the basic design concepts in the derivation stage, they're not going to be the only people involved in the design. It'll end up being a big opportunity cost if only a few people in the company could understand the fundamentals and the specifics of a design. So as we see it, this is a really crucial step in making sure that the valuable knowledge that's being derived by the company employees are actually being captured in a way that will stand the test of time and of new designs. Now, not only is it important for the, that knowledge to be captured in a way where it can be used and reused properly, but it has to be captured in a way where it can be deployed easily throughout an organization. And it also has to be captured in a way where it can be deployed to other software and other tools involved. So as a typical company moves through these stages from concept to deployment, knowledge is typically lost at every step of the way, or it's locked away at every step of the way. And this happens for a huge number of reasons. Sometimes they're simply due to, again, confusing spreadsheets or an engineer leaving the company. Other times it's locked within a certain design tool and to really pull out the information you need in a proper way uh, is very, very difficult and time consuming. So MapleSim was developed to help get that knowledge where it needs to go during development. And we call this unlocking commercial knowledge. We designed this tool not only to give you the best experience in system level modeling, but to make sure that all the valuable information that you're creating within our software is fully accessible to the people and the tools that are going to need it the most. And with that in mind, I wanted to talk just a bit about how our tool was created to address all those problems that can pop up when knowledge isn't making its way into the right place in an organization. So the first step of knowledge derivation is really about moving from concept to more concrete design knowledge. And we've created MapleSim to make that a faster process and to remove common sources of many errors. So by modeling within our environment, the actual process of working with mathematics is very intuitive and it reduces a lot of the errors involved in using programs that don't trace the mathematics in a live way. Um, if you're going to be doing spreadsheet work or you're going to be working in a scratch pad, there's a lot of room for error there. That just simply won't be the case with using our software. And using MapleSim, deriving the basics of your designs is a really fast and easy process compared to past techniques. You can quickly create models by dragging in one of several hundred components that are already created, and you can customize them to your design through all of the different parameters involved. If you have CAD models that you're looking to import, we can import those CAD models in and pull data from those models to get you started. Moving into the capture stage is really about recognizing how much value is really in the knowledge and intellectual property that you've generated along the way. And, and taking that seriously and making sure that it's easy to understand and that it can be audited easily and it can be validated so you can move forward in a quicker way. And that it's set up in a way that it can be reused for projects down the line. So we created MapleSim recognizing just how important it is to take this design knowledge seriously. So we have what we call a white box modeling solution. So at any point in your design or simulation, you can always dig deeper into the physics underlying a component, into the connections between components. And it's very easy to try and track down what it is that's working or not working well. And 
if you compare that to a lot of other tools out there, that level of explicit interconnection is just very hard to come by. You recognize the value in auditing and validation. Uh, part of our software allows you to create easy reports. It allows you to pull in the mathematics from your models and it prevents having to go into a different program to create a report with multiple screen captures along the way with mathematics that you can't adjust live that just end up being pictures. And we recognize just how important it is to be able to reuse design knowledge. So if, if your company has a very specific mechanism that you use in a variety of your designs, in MapleSim you can just create that mechanism and you can easily transport it across different models. And a lot of companies we work with will end up having their own custom libraries of their precise subsystems and components. And this just makes the process of incorporating them into future designs lightning fast. It ends up saving people a lot of time and it allows them to quickly modify those mechanisms just to see what might happen if they were to say double the size of a certain component. And finally, you wanna take the knowledge that you've worked so hard to create and allow it to get in the hands of all the people that need to use it. So with a system level modeling approach, your model's gonna really sit at the heart of that design process. And we've designed our software to be very accessible to all the people who might need to use it and all the tools that might need to connect to it. So with MapleSim, what you can do is create applications for specific tasks, say a motor sizing application. Uh, these are very easy to make using our software Maple. And you can create a sort of deployment interface to your model because not everyone is going to have the full understanding that the systems engineer might, but they might be involved in sizing those motors as one of their primary tasks. So a lot of our customers will have their model sitting at the heart of their design, but they'll have a variety of these simplified interfaces that a lot of other people in the company can easily use. So that's a really great feature in sort of taking bottlenecks out of the design process. We also offer company-wide access with a MapleSim server product that we have. So this is a great way to be able to share the insight for the model that you've created, especially if those people don't actually need to do intensive modeling. They just need to get some results out. And the variety of ways that we offer to connect the tools is once again recognizing that the knowledge in that model is the most useful when it can plug into your existing tool chain. So all the different pieces of value that you're creating along the way in a system level model, those things can all be pulled out, modified easily, and plugged back into the next design process. So it, it, it's really effective at preventing you needing to reinvent the wheel at any point. Uh, the, the kind of work that you're doing in a design process is going to be paying you back for designs to come and to come. And this is what we think is one of the main values of taking a systems level approach. It's the kind of value we've seen in some customers where in their first project, they've experienced value using software like MapleSim, and then in their second project, they're even better at it. And it, it's something that continues to grow and how useful it is for your company the more that you embed your knowledge in a proper, well-managed way. So we've talked a lot about the product, and now I'll just take you into the software for a few minutes and give you a bit of clearer of a sense of what I've been talking about with the way that we use models and analysis afterwards. And to give you that demonstration inside MapleSim, I'd like to introduce you to Orang Vahid, who's the director of our applications engineering team here at MapleSoft. Orang? Hello, my name is Orang Vahid. Let's just start by looking at an industrial pick and place robot. It's uh, a system with uh, three links. Uh, links are uh, have uh, parameterized mass, geometry, and inertia. Each joint is driven by a uh, motor uh, gearbox uh, component. It also parameterized. The path is provided by a lookup table from measurements or uh, other requirements. Uh, the path is converted to joint uh, motion by an inverse kinematic block. Uh, running the system here will give us the animation of the robot in action as it uh, performs a task assigned to it. And uh, system level modeling allows us to uh, make changes to the, to the model and see the effect of it on a variety of different output. And you can see that there's all sorts of outputs are created from this model. And um, so a complex model uh, creates a, a lot of outputs. Uh, so it's important 
for a designer to not only investigate all of these, be able to create uh, more focused tools to answer specific questions. In, in this example, we use this um, uh, dynamic model of a, um, a machine, in this case a uh, robot, and we create a um, design tool from it. The design tool already is attached to the model, so we'll just open it. Design tool has uh, different segments for uh, running the simulation, doing motor performance analysis. So we start with uh, looking at the simulation results by running the model, similar plots as uh, we have seen uh, from the MapleSim itself. Uh, we can group them, uh, add more post-processing, such as looking at the RMS of the signal, the mean max. So uh, this quickly can um, help with um, focusing on the more important parts of the simulation. Motor performance, uh, having a speed and torque plotted together to see what is the envelope of operation of each of the three motors in this example. And also using uh, um, Maple to uh, uh, superimpose the plots of the actual usage versus the a, uh, electric motor characteristics. Uh, quickly here we see that by doing this type of analysis we can uh, select a motor whether a particular motor from a catalog or, or, or a manufacturer would fit a particular usage for a particular path or, and uh, 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 torque and velocity. Uh, similar to what we have seen before, uh, grouping of the results is very important. Uh, the user can export the results uh, to Excel for example. Here we uh, export the entire result set for this particular uh, simulation uh, into Excel. We can do parameter sweep on the uh, mechanism, on the entire mechanism. You can see that uh, the values of parameters are changed and different uh, outputs from the system are investigated to make sure that for the range of design or family of design that we are interested in, the other requirements are met. Thank you very much. Thanks, Zarain. So just a little bit about our tools and the services that we offer. Uh, we offer a full range of software to take on a system level modeling approach in a way that will start paying you back after the first project. And for a lot of companies, they may need some internal expertise developed to really take this on. And that's why we have an engineering solutions group which are professionals who will help train you, who will help develop your first model with you and help you understand the best ways to use that in your organization. Really a way to kickstart the process of taking something like this on. Our mission is really to help you make your engineering projects succeed. Our engineering solutions group will work with you so that you can achieve more results in less time, reduce project risk along the way, and share better results with people who need it the most. So with that, I just wanted to thank you all for spending some time with me today. If you have any other questions or want some more information about our products, just follow the links on the screen. And if you send us an email at webinars at maplesoft.com, we'll be happy to respond to you as quick as we can. Thanks so much, everyone.